that your existence is going to end. You're going to be left out. And then from there on, it comes to other things. Finances is a major fear for a lot of people. Their family, their loved ones. So it goes on and on and on. And ultimately you're saying, well, I'm really worried what's going to happen. What is going to happen to the world? But it's not really the world. You're just really honestly worried about yourself. That's where it's coming from. I'm really worried about what's going to happen in the world. No, if you're honest and you really look, you're really worried about what's going to happen to me and what's going to happen to my finances and what's going to happen to my children and my loved ones. That's the very essence of it, which is okay, which is true. Why not? But then we're relating it that I'm worried about what's going to happen to the world or what's going to happen. I'm really concerned about our future of humanity. No, sweetheart, you're really concerned about yourself. Let's be honest. If there's guaranteed that something happened worldwide, you and your family is going to be okay, and you don't worry so much about it. You have to be honest with yourself and look deep. Just one moment. Amir, can you close that door and maybe you just go from underneath here? Yeah, great. So, thought is a worry is a passing, is a visitor, it's passing through, it's visiting. So we need to get into this practice of simply being the observer, you're observing that the thought, the worry, the fear is here and not bother in picking it up and personalizing it and decorating it because that's what we do. We personalize it and we decorate it. You simply get in a habit of being aware of it. It appears, you acknowledge its presence, there's nothing you can do and you have to feel it too because fear is here and it's in your body and you cannot deny it. That's what most people do. They try to deny it or they take certain courses and practices and seminars to learn how to numb yourself and not to feel it. That's wrong. You have to feel it and acknowledge it because it's bigger than you and it demands your attention. It demands your acknowledgement. And if you don't, it comes back again and again and again. So you're simply acknowledging its presence. You acknowledge that fear is here and it's visiting you and you feel it and feel if just dive into being scared. Be scared. There's nothing wrong with being scared. Be scared in that moment. But you don't need to live your life being scared. You just feel it in the moment. And that always, if you pay attention, fear, experiencing fear in a moment actually makes you become alive. It tightens you up. It's different than depression that drags you down. Fear makes you become alive. So it's not really an enemy. It is an enemy because you've never been trained what to do with it, how to acknowledge it, how to deal with it. So it's hunting you because we haven't learned to master our own mind. Mastery of the mind. So we're slaves of the mind. And the mind is a horrible slave master. 
and it will do all the things it's been doing it to you, to all of us. Until you learn how to master it, then things change. Then the mind becomes a powerful tool. And as you awaken, then you have access to more of the capacity of the mind. Because right now, you're only using less than 10% of it. Hum human beings are not, not using, like I think Einstein used, I don't know, 15% or something of his mind. So he was a genius. Huh? 12? 4%, 4%, so ordinary human, ordinary human being, according to Amir, uses 2%. Einstein used 4%. Now, my numbers may not be correct, forgive me, I haven't done my homework on, on this particular thing I'm talking about, I need to do some homework. But the point is that God has given us this mind you might as well use it, sweetheart, positively. So far, you're being haunted by it. It's always haunting you and torturing you because you think that's who you are. And all it does, it creates worry, anxiety, fear, and you got this chatter in there that da 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 so, this part of you tells you, okay, go, go buy that ice cream, eat that ice cream, eat that ice cream. And then you go to eat the ice cream and you overeat and now you got your stomach is bloated. And now the same voice was telling you, go eat it, go eat it, is beating you up. You're such, a, you're such an idiot. You're so stupid. You never learn. How many times I told you, don't eat too much ice cream? <laughs> you, you see that? And especially to wherever you come to, it may, you may enter into a zone that gives you a teachings, a system that may give you the power to master your mind. You know what your mind comes and does? Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, you don't need that. Oh, watch the videos on YouTube or you're going to learn it. And then you don't do it. But the same mind comes back and all of your friends went and did it. And then your, your same mind comes they, they all got enlightened. You're such an idiot. You missed it. You're cheap. You didn't do it. You could have done it. Now it's going to beat you up. I experienced that myself a million times. And I experienced it with a lot of my people. This last time when we had our Sedona retreat, and there were people like, they were fooling around with it. They wanted to, da, 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 and then, oh, you're going to do it next year. Well, pandemic happened. The, I'm having the same people sending me messages. I'm such a fool. I'm so stupid. I should have been coming. When are you going to do it, Zaratustra? Can you do it again? I go, no, I can't do it again. We can't travel. It's not safe. But it's the same mind. And the same thing with your relationships. And same thing with everything else. The same mind comes and tells you, don't do this, don't do that. And then you don't do it and it comes and beats you up. So you, we, you, we, whatever, haven't learned how to deal with this thing 